This is Long Way to the Top, and I'm your host, Shane Bryan. In the words of the immortal ACDC, it is harder than it looks. These interviews will give you a glimpse into the lives of the artists that we've sung along with, danced and rocked out to. Some go deep into their past and others celebrate their recent releases. But all of them show that regardless of who you are, it's always a long way to the top. Our special guest on Long Way to the Top today, the Psychedelic Furs, established by brothers Richard and Tim Butler. Eight albums, a huge album in 1981 called Talk, Talk, Talk. Two massive singles, Love My Way and Pretty in Pink, and they are heading to Australia in April for the Pandemonium Rocks Festival. You can find out all the ticket details on pandemonium.rocks. Tim Butler, the bass player from Psychedelic Furs, is our special guest on today's Long Way to the Top. Tim, how are you? I'm doing very well, Shane. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Thanks for uh, joining me on the show today. No problem. A massive festival that you guys are embarking on very soon, uh, and that is, of course, Pandemonium Rocks. Yeah, and that, that's great. I'm looking forward to seeing... Uh, Alice Cooper. Yeah, isn't he a sensation? Big, still, big, big, big fan, big fan of, uh, of Alice Cooper. Yeah, yeah. Now I, I want to uh, go back to uh, I guess when you first came out, and it was your second album, nineteen eighty one, an album called Talk, 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 and that was kind of what really set you on the path, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we slogged our way around on our first album. We slogged our way around uh, America. Mm. Uh, Against against CBS's wishes because they said you know don't, don't you know don't come over you know mm. it's not uh, the uh, country's not ready for you so we did and we got a big uh, got a, a a foot on the rung of uh, college radio which was huge over here at the time mm. uh, and then when it came to when it came to talk talk talk. You know, it just uh, made a natural progression from the groundwork we had done. Mm. The song, uh, of course, the, the the big single, Love My Way, uh, it was really talking about or like questioning our sexuality back then, which was a, was a big thing in 1986. I mean, it's totally acceptable today. I mean, did you see the theme of the song as a, as a big risk at the time? I didn't. I, I don't know whether Richard did when he was writing the lyrics, but, you know... I don't think so. It's just the way you thought about, you know, love being as you uh, as you want. If you're not if you're not harming anybody, yeah, it's not anything to do with you know. It's it's one person's choice, not you know the the whole society. As yes. long as you're not hurting anybody, be happy. Yes, exactly, exactly. And of course, it was a huge hit. Music video on MTV was put into high rotation. Uh, what what do you think it was about the song that really struck a chord with with listeners? I think from initial listening, it, it's the uh, the marimba, which is a, a very underused rock and roll instrument. Yeah, but if you listen to it, it, it it's a very very sparse song and very uh, marimba dominated, which I'm surprised that it uh, did so well because of the you know of using a. Uh, an instrument probably is like eighty percent of the people who saw the video probably didn't know what it was. But yeah. <laughs> it worked. Yeah, yeah, and it was such a unique sound, wasn't it? It really, really set you guys apart. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I, I think. Uh, uh, having a sax player did as well. I don't, I don't mm. think in the eighties there was that many uh, sax players in bands. No, no, and of course, you know, we should also mention that that Mars Williams uh, passed away last year with the saxophonist. Uh, that was yeah, so so sad. Yeah, I mean, he had done he 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 got his cancer diagnosis, and his doctor had said to him, you know, we're out of things to do mm. for you, uh, and he he was saying, you know, should I go on this tour? You know, in case something comes up, they. He said, "No, you can uh, you can go out on this tour. Just go out and you know have fun." Mm. And on the tour, it was uh, you could see he was getting uh, weaker and weaker and sicker and sicker. Uh, and I guess the, at the last at the last show in uh, in Las Vegas, 
he called us all into uh, uh, he had his own dressing room because he was so cold all the time mm. that he had to have a room that was really hot with heaters, you know, blow heaters and stuff. Yeah. He called us all into the room and said, you know, I love you guys, you know, hopefully I'll see you at the uh, Darker Waves Festival. Yeah. And he didn't, he didn't, he was so sick, he didn't come out to that. And a couple of days after we did that, we heard that he had, uh, he had passed away, which is a big, a big blow to her because he's like a, a family member. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, so sad. It's been hard. We're, we're, uh, we're, we're getting in, uh, uh, Richard Fortis, who, who played with Love Spit Love, and he's oh, yeah. played with the first before, but he, but he's going to do, the shows with us, and it, it, so it should be a more more of a, a guitar orientated rock and roll sort of uh, uh, set that we play. Yeah, fantastic. Now, I, I I want to ask psychedelic furs. Where did the name actually come from? It came as a uh, um, to get back at. I mean, uh, around about the time we started, punk was uh, huge. Yeah. And there's all these bands, you know, bands like the Sex Pistols and uh, uh, Venus and the Razor Blade and the Clash and the Stranglers. And the, the, they'd all put down psychedelic music. Mm. Uh, and we liked, a lot of our influences uh, was, you know, psychedelic bands like the first Frank Zappa album mm. and the, the Velvet Underground. And we liked, you know, we liked bands like the, the, uh, the Stooges and... Mm. Roxy music, which was sort of looked down on, and we just wanted a a name that would uh, would stand out on uh, gig listings. You know, yeah. people would look at you know psychedelic psych- psych- furs and think, "What the hell? What's all this about?" I've got to go and check it out. <laughs> yes, and it worked. <laughs> it did work. It totally worked. Yeah, and it definitely separated you from the punk rockers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that, that was the whole thing because, and I think we. we Decided to form a band, Richard and I, after yeah. seeing the Sex Pistols at the Hundred Club, and uh, our, our sort of sound is like a, a cross between Roxy Music and the Velvet Underground with uh, the energy and anger of the Sex yeah. Pistols. Yeah, I, I, I think your your music is really, um, you know, listening to songs like uh, "Love My Way" and "Pretty in Pink." It, it really was the definition of, of, of 80s music, especially that new wave music. And it's, it, in my opinion, it's, it's the go-to uh, when you're listening to that, to that uh, period. Oh, thank you. You start something hoping, you know, yes. you'll get listeners. Or, but you never dream, you know, 40 years later or 30 years later, that you you'll have made that much impact that bands will be citing you as uh, influences, yeah. and you'll still get you know large audiences there to see you. It just makes it all worth all worthwhile. I'm very proud of, yeah. of what you've done. Now, of course, you know, Pretty in Pink wasn't just used in a 1986 John Hughes movie. They they took the name and used it for the movie as well. Yeah, and the story has nothing to do with the song. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, look, you know, let, let's not get the uh, the facts in, in the way of a good story, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's not to do with a woman, a, a girl making a pink dress for prom. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, just uh, finally, um, Stranger Things. Uh, I think. Um, we should sort of mention that because you know one of your songs, "Ghost of You," was put in in uh, one of the the seasons of Stranger Things. Has has shows like that really um, helped with bringing about an eighties revival for bands like yourself? Yeah, and especially the the, the song that you were talking about, "Love My Way," was all over. Uh, Call me by my name. Yeah, yeah, that movie. Yes. It, was, it was in that set of it, and they actually, at one point, they actually have a scene where there's some some uh, young kids or young youngsters talking about going to see a psychedelic first concert. Yes, yeah, fantastic. So yeah, that that sort of that, that sort of thing was it was out of the blue, but it was great. Yeah, and I think all of these shows really, you know, I mean, they're they're leaning on the '80s music because it it really was such a, a unique and timeless period. Yeah, I mean, you listen to nowadays a lot of bands uh, sounding like 80s bands. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it went it went to, you know, I, I guess when grunge came in, you know, the eighties was looked down on and, you know, criticized. But I think there's more influential bands from the eighties than uh, there are from the nineties. Yeah. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. If you look at if you look at Depeche Mode, The Cure, U2, mm. Us, uh, In Excess, you know, uh, I, I can only think of like two from the, the 90s. <laughs> uh, I can't even think off the top of my head. Pearl yeah. Jam and uh, Nirvana. Yeah, that's it, and right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Now, uh, just finally, uh, what music are you listening to at the moment? I always uh, like to ask this question. Uh, Pearl Drama Nirvana. <laughs> <laughs> good answer, good answer. A band called Ghost. Ghost, yes. Yeah, they're actually making a lot of impact, aren't they? Oh, yeah, I went to see them. Uh, I'm so surprised I went to see them at Cincinnati and I was blown away. It's like the third best show I've ever seen. Yeah. And their records and stuff, I can't get them off my uh, stereo, especially you know, the last one. Yeah, they're they're, they're going to be they they already are big. I think they're going to be huge. They're going to be even bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, and yeah. I'm a little late to the party on that one, but uh, since uh, since listening to them, yeah, I'm a fan as well. I think what it is is that their music includes so much sort of uh, influences. You can go to you say you know from like the seventies. You can say, oh, mm. I hear a bit of that band or a bit of this band. And yeah. it's, it's all stuff that latches, latches into your brain and, you, you know, you can't forget it. It's great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, look, I, I, I'm mindful of the time. So, uh, Tim Butler, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you when we get there. Oh, it's going to be a sensational uh, festival, and we absolutely can't wait. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks, Tim. Bye. All right, bye. That was Tim Butler, bass player for the Psychedelic Furs. And don't forget, if you want all the information on Pandemonium Rocks, you can head over to the website, pandemonium.rocks, and all the dates are there. It's going to be a sensational concert. Hit plus or follow to subscribe to the podcast and head over to Facebook at The Long Way to the Top Podcast and give us a like. Keep on rocking and I'll catch you on the next episode of Long Way to the Top. Long Way to the Top.